Main screen, turn on. Hi everyone, I'm Gerrit, this is Jan, and today we're going to be looking at the ASUS ePad slider. For Let's Talk Network, he's a freelancer for my broadband, I'm a permanent staff writer, don't kill me. So first I want to take a look at the outside of the ASUS ePad slider. Um, so first, going to be looking on this side, you have a full USB port and a 3.5mm jack. On the top, the mini HDMI port and the uh, proprietary connector, uh, which is the same as that on the transformer, which is kind of cool. Uh, kind of cool because it's the same as on the transformer. Kind of not cool because it's still proprietary. But at least I'm, I'm hoping it means that they've kind of fixed on a standard. And then over on this side, you have the micro SD slot, a hardware reset button, which is a bit of a curiosity, uh, the volume rocker, and a power button. Now, some things I've noticed, especially with uh, the power button, is it's placed exactly where you're going to be putting your left hand. And that means that, at least at first, uh, you're, you're probably going to be pressing it a bit, which is a little bit irritating. So, in my opinion, it would have been better if they'd swapped these buttons to the top. I have a question yeah. on, the, uh, on the proprietary connector. What's it for? Uh, it's for data, data uh, transfer and charging. Okay. So everything happens through there. Okay, so can you connect that to the Transformers dock? Uh, I don't think it'll fit, no. Okay. No. Moving right along, okay, that's the outside, so maybe we should talk a little bit about the, the other specs of the device. About the inside, there's nothing really new about the, uh, about the slider. It's got a Tegra 2 clocked at 1 gigahertz, uh, which is pretty much the same as what we've seen on every other Android tablet except maybe the HTC Flyer. Uh, it's got a gig of RAM. It has Wi-Fi. Storage-wise, 16, 32, and then expandable by up to another 32 via the micro SD. Great, great. And um, we've covered the cameras, 5 megs on the back. 5 megs on the back and 1.2 on the front. Okay. The 5 me megapixel camera on the back, let me actually, it's over here. You can see no flash, which is maybe a little bit disappointing, but if you're using a tablet for uh, taking hardcore photos, you're probably doing it wrong. Um, and, yeah, the, the, the shots are actually fairly decent. Okay. And the front, obviously good enough for uh, video chat. Yeah, so yeah. Good enough for that. Well, let's get to the crux of this thing, because what sets this thing apart is the keyboard. Is the keyboard. And it's right over here. Uh, on the back, there's a, a little bit of a flick up, and then it slides up, just like that. Cool. Uh, when we did the, the first look when you were at Rage, it looked like it's a little tricky to get up. A little tricky to get up if you don't know that this handle at the top is there. The hinge itself is fairly stiff, um, and it looks fairly good quality too. So then you can have a look at the hinge. Nice. And the hinge mechanism. You can see the screen is, actually no you can't. You can see, there it is. The screen actually hooks in over there. Like so. Mm. So it's, it's sturdy. It's good quality. It doesn't feel like it's going to be breaking anytime soon. Mm. As for the keyboard, uh, I'm, I'm not a big fan. Actually, it's, it's a little bit small, and I think I have kind of small hands for a dude. So, uh, writing the review on the Transformer itself was kind of difficult without making mistakes in the form of missed keys. So, it's not that I'm typing the wrong key, it's that the key, uh, I'm not typing certain keys, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, if you compare it to, say, the, the Asus Transformer, which I, I found was a really good keyboard, it's got uh, five, this one has five rows, the Transformer has an extra row at the top here with uh, special Android keys. Home is in the same place, uh, menu over here, and the search button has been relegated all the way to the side. You still have a couple of uh, quick function keys as secondary functions, so your brightness up and down, switching Bluetooth on and off, and switching your Wi-Fi on and off, but no screenshot button, no volume, uh, none of that. Mm -hmm. So a curiosity was the another curiosity was the reset button. What does that actually do? I I don't know. It's sunken in. It's hard to press. So the only time I actually did press it was when I was trying to press it and I was trying to figure out what it's there for. So I I don't know why they put it there. The the, the device doesn't lock up, and putting a hardware reset button there makes me actually think that ASUS doesn't have faith in the device that it's you know not going to lock up, but it doesn't. Uh, at least not in my experience. Yeah. So. 
I'm, I'm not entirely sure why they did include it there. So talking about lockups, what version of Android is it running? Uh, it's running Honeycomb version 3.1, but Asus has said that there is a, uh, an over-the-air update for 3.2 rolling out, so same version as that on the Asus Transformer. Mm -hmm. And I think for South Africa, it's um, those the, these two devices from ASUS are the few devices running 3.2. Yeah, which is it's really cool to me. OEM customizations? Uh, they do have a couple of of applications. Uh, specifically, they have uh, MyNet and MyCloud. MyCloud is includes some cool things. It has uh, the the ASUS Storage Cloud. Um, honestly, Dropbox is better. But they do give you unlimited storage for a year, which is pretty sweet. So that's nice. My net is, is cool um, because it gives you, for, for me at least, it, it gave me some DLNA streaming. So it, it hooks up to your network, and uh, the DLNA devices just show up there. And then you can browse your music and your photos and your videos and just stream it straight to the device, provided that it can play those formats. Sure, sure. So those that, that's that. Uh, it comes standard with uh, Amazon Kindle, the the Kindle app that is, and uh, a couple of other things like the like Zinio and Press Reader, which you I don't use. Anyway. I, I don't use that much. You can download anyway. Uh, so there's that. So so other than that, it is a stock Honeycomb installation. Yes, brilliant. Uh, as as stock as can be. The the buttons over here are actually not stock, but I mean that's minimal. Yes. So. Other than that, no, no, no kind of sense overlay, no kind of no touch was nothing that'll take them long. Nothing, yes, exactly, nothing that'll take them long to roll out updates, which cool. is brilliant. Yes. And price-wise, what are we looking at? Five triple nine is the is the recommended retail price, which is you know fairly close to the transformer plus the dock. Yes. Which makes sense because it's a it's a tablet plus a keyboard. Yes. Except. Again, the Transformers keyboard to me is just a little bit better in that respect. Gives does, you does what kind of battery life do you get out of this one? Because the Transformers dock gives you extra an, battery uh, yeah, life. Yeah, it gives you an extra five hours. This guy gives you, uh, in, in the tests I ran, about seven and a half hours of, of video looping uh, at 65% brightness. And you were looping hackers, right? Yes. Okay, I, was, I was looping 720p video. So about seven and a half hours, which is top of the ranking so far. So it beats it beats, beats the, the transformer. Beats the transformer by half an hour. It beats the Samsung Galaxy Tab also by half an hour. So it's you know it, it's decent. Okay. Uh, but not as good as the transformer with a dock, which will give you in the order of like thirteen, fourteen, okay. maybe more. But okay. Yeah. So if you had to, if you had to pick an Android tablet right now, um, mm -hmm. what would you choose? Just the tablet. Yes. Uh, I'd say still Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. Okay. Just the tablet. If I was going to go for something with accessories, Transformer has the, the better keyboard in my opinion. Great. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you.